Google just launched its brand new agentic vibe coding tool called Anti Gravity. It has its own agent manager view, an agent controlled Chrome browser, and even parallel agents to run multiple tasks at the same time. But is Anti Gravity really a hundred percent free? And is it better than Cursor 2.0 or Cloud Code? And can I build fully native mobile apps with Anti Gravity? In this video, we're going to cover all these questions and help you get started with Anti Gravity. To start with, is Anti Gravity 100% free? Currently, on Anti Gravity's pricing page, there's only a single individual plan mentioned. The rest are all coming soon, and the individual plan is zero dollars a month. Now, why would Google give out a complete agentic IDE tool for free? What is even more interesting is that Google has given free access to Gemini 3 Pro, Claude Sonnet 4.5, and GPT OSS. Gemini 3 Pro is in fact Google's latest flagship model. There are two main reasons to this. Even though Google was one of the first and heaviest players in the AI world, companies like Bolt, Lovable, Replit are the go-to tools for non-coders. For developers, Claude Code Cursor and OpenAI Codex are the de facto tools. And there is also a wave of much cheaper Chinese. AI LLMs coming out like DeepSeek or Z.AI. The second thing to note is that while the tool itself is for free and the model access is also for free, the rate limits are not unlimited. And if you are a pro developer, even with an ultra account, this can be frustrating. But that being said, Google is definitely playing the long game by giving such an amazing tool for completely free. Now, before we compare Anti Gravity with Cursor 2.0, let's have a quick look at the features of Anti Gravity. Now, as soon as you download Anti Gravity, you'll realize that it's a very familiar look. That's because this is built on top of Visual Studio Code, just like Cursor 2.0 or Windsurf. Now, in the editor mode, you would have a familiar view on the left side, but just with the agent view similar to how copilot or cursor works on the right you can see that anti gravity gives you all of these models for free now when you click on open agent manager you can see the agent manager view inside anti gravity you can click on start a conversation and write a prompt to generate an app i'm using the gemini 3 pro model here now what is very interesting in anti gravity is the concept of artifacts now, if you have used cursor or cloud code, you would have these multiple .md files that the LLM creates for its own references. Anti gravity keeps all these documentation files under artifacts, but it's not just cleanly organized. What is really amazing is that you can directly comment on top of these artifacts and the agent takes up the comment as a task to further improve your application. So you can see that a list of tasks has been created just like any other LLM. But here I have a button called review, just like your pull requests. When I click on review, I can actually submit a comment, but instead of submitting a review comment to a developer, I'm telling the agent what I like or don't like in the process that it's following. Now, let's say instead of a white plus react project, I want to use Next.js. I can simply click on review and say, change the app to use Next.js and Supabase instead. Now, when I click on submit, this creates a new task to the agent. And here you can see that it is adjusting the plan to use Next.js and Supabase instead of White plus React. Now the next artifact that it creates is something called as an implementation plan, which now uses Next.js and Supabase. You can easily access all your artifacts in the agent chat window in the editor mode. If you click on this button, you can see all the artifact names. Now, if you see the anti-gravity official documentation, there is a complete section on artifacts and there are six types of artifacts which anti-gravity creates in the planning mode. Now, I already showed you the task list and implementation plan artifacts in the demo, but after the agent completes a task, Anti-Gravity can create a walkthrough artifact, which can also contain screenshots. Walkthrough is a concise summary of all the changes that the agent has made. Anti-Gravity can also take screenshots using the browser sub agent, and you can actually give comments on certain parts of the screenshots, which the agent can understand and immediately take as an action item. Now, apart from screenshot, the browser can also take video recordings to check if the UI is working as expected. The last artifact is knowledge. Knowledge items are Anti-Gravity's way of persisting memory, specifically for the important insights sites, patterns, and your coding practices. The agent has access to the summary of all these knowledge items. If the agent identifies a knowledge item that is relevant to this conversation, it will automatically study the artifacts in that knowledge item. Now, typically an LLM would need to run a lot of commands in the terminal. Anti-gravity has given you three options based on the level of control you would like the agent to have. If you say off, the agent will ask you for permission for running each command. If you select turbo, it will always run all the commands on its own. But if you say auto, the model will decide when to run its own command or when to ask you. And finally, the agent inbox is where the agent manager keeps a track of all the agent conversations running parallelly. Now that we are done with the feature specific questions, let's have a look at the more common questions asked about anti-gravity. Let's look at how anti-gravity compares to cursor, specifically cursor's latest version, cursor 2.0. 
both anti gravity and cursor are multi modal in the sense that you can switch the task between multiple models but what is important to understand is that anti gravity gives gemini 3 pro Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT OSS for free. Yes, it is rate limited and the last 24 hours has been really difficult to use these models because literally the whole world seems to be trying this tool out right now. But the free access definitely means that more people are going to try out anti-gravity much more. But if you have a paid access to cursor at the moment, you will find the model access much more smoother at cursor. But remember that anti-gravity is currently in public preview mode, hence the no charge and hence the Gemini 3 Pro free usage. But once the initial hype is done or when the Gemini 3 Pro flash model comes out, things would be definitely different. Both anti-gravity and cursor do support parallel agents, which means multiple agents may be running on different models can run your one task. Anti-gravity uses the agent manager view which we just saw. Cursor also allows parallel agents with up to eight agents running in parallel. Now if you do use parallel agents, one thing that you need is work tree. Each agent which is updating the code should make sure that the added code does not conflict with the other code written by the other agent. Anti-gravity and cursor have different approaches to solve this. Anti-gravity uses isolated workspaces where each agent is running in its own tenant. Cursor on the other hand uses git work tree concept which makes dedicated git branches for each agent to write code in. Personally as a developer I think the cursor approach is much better because I feel much more in control of the code and I am also able to differentiate exactly what changed and what to revert. But since anti-gravity is also competing with say lovable or replit, the concept of git might be too complicated for them. So an isolated workspace is much more understandable to the layman. Now coming to the browser access, anti-gravity has an inbuilt Chrome browser which it can access. So when you ask it to add a contact form to my website, it can make the changes in HTML but also open the website on the Chrome browser, add values to the contact form, take a screen recording of the website and review whether the job was done correctly. This has a huge impact on both front-end development as well as front-end automation testing. Now coming to the question of building mobile apps with anti-gravity, one of the main reasons I feel like this will be the de facto mobile app builder is because Google owns a bunch of tools that are needed to deploy a good mobile application. Flutter and React Native are the two most common frameworks used for native mobile application development. Chrome is the most popular browser used for testing these applications on a browser before testing them locally on an Android or iOS device. And finally, since Google owns Google Play itself, publishing which is still one of the most difficult steps in vibe coding of a mobile app can be made much more easier with a possible future integration. Now after going through the entire documentation of anti-gravity, I see that they are pitching this tool as a product for full stack developers. They have multiple pages of use cases and stories for how full stack development can be done with it, which is definitely a good sign. And finally, there is excellent MCP support in anti-gravity. If you see the anti-gravity docs, there is a dedicated page called MCP which lists all the MCP servers that are available by default in anti-gravity and how to use them. So I tried setting up the Superbase MCP. The agent was able to access both the list of projects and the list of Superbase tables and provide a clean list of schema tables for me to access. This makes it much more easier to run SQL commands and do multiple backend changes directly with wipe coding without much code needed. Now once you start testing anti-gravity, you will most probably face login issues which Google has already started fixing and second you will face rate limiting issues. This is because anti-gravity is right now in a public preview mode. Once the initial hype for the tool dies down and they also provide structured pricing plans, this should get resolved. Now anti-gravity claims to not just be built for greenfield zero to one prototype projects but also support these large scale products and build additional features on top of them or refactor them. Personally I think there is a good point here because one of the only solutions that has actually worked for wipe coding large scale products is spec kit by github and the concept of artifact that anti-gravity has introduced is very similar. You can create tasks, implementation guides and different kind of these artifacts which help the agent not lose track right, and not lose context which is one of the biggest problems in large scale projects. I do plan to create a hands-on video of creating a complete mobile application using anti-gravity so comment below what kind of app you would like me to build. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more such videos.